What companies produce is generically referred to as output or product. What companies use to produce product are generically referred to as factors. Economists divide factors into two groups, short-run factors and long-run factors. Short-run factors are those factors whose quantities can be altered relatively quickly. Long-run factors are factors whose quantities cannot be altered quickly. Typical examples of short-run factors are labor and materials. For example, plastic, wood, dairy and meat products, and electricity. Materials means any non-labor input that is transformed into the product. Typical examples of long-run factors are capital and technology. Capital is also called economic capital to distinguish it from investment money, which in business courses is also called capital or financial capital. Examples of economic capital are buildings, land, and machinery, things that are used to transform labor and materials into product. Technology is not computers. Computers are economic capital. Technology is intangible. It is the company's managerial and productive sophistication. For example, workers who are organized in an assembly line produce more output than do workers who work in parallel. Horizontal management structures tend to be less costly than vertical management structures. These are examples of differing levels of technology. Let's return to our example of the workers producing pizza. We know how much pizza we can produce with varying numbers of workers. If we plot these data, we can see how the firm's output changes as the firm increases the quantity of short-run factors it employs. In stage one, output increases at an increasing rate. In stage two, output increases at a decreasing rate. And in stage three, output decreases. Let's define two new measures, marginal product and average product. Marginal product is the extra output generated from employing one additional unit of short-run factor. For example, when the firm has no workers, it produces no pizza, and when it has one worker, it produces six pizzas. We say that the marginal product of the first worker is six pizzas per day. When the firm has one worker, it produces six pizzas, and when it has two workers, it produces 20 pizzas we say that the marginal product of the second worker is 14 pizzas per day. In general, the marginal product is the change in the quantity of output produced divided by the change in the quantity of the factor employed. By observing what happens to the quantity of output as we add each worker, we can calculate the marginal product of each worker. Average product is the average output generated by all the units of short-run factor. Average product is the output per unit of factor employed. For example, when the firm has one worker, it produces six pizzas, and so its output per worker is six pizzas per day. When the firm has two workers, it produces 20 pizzas, so its output per worker is 10 pizzas per day. In general, the average product is the quantity of output divided by the quantity of factor employed. By dividing the quantity of output by the number of workers, we can calculate the average product for each of the various quantities of workers. The difference between marginal product and average product is the same as the difference between a test grade and your course grade. A test grade tells you how well you performed on the last exam. A course grade tells you how well you performed, on average, on all your tests combined. Marginal product is like the test grade. Average product is like the course grade. This is what it looks like when we combine the total marginal and average product curves into a single graph. In stage one, marginal product rises as the number of workers increases. This means that each additional worker is contributing more to the firm's output than the last worker contributed. The increasing marginal product causes the average output per worker to increase, and it causes output to increase at an increasing rate. In stage two, marginal product starts to fall as the number of workers increases. As long as marginal product is greater than average product, adding workers pulls the average product up. It's like getting lower and lower test scores. Even though you're getting lower and lower test scores, 
as long as those test scores are above your course average, they pull your course average up. Once marginal product falls below average product, it starts to pull the average product down. Throughout stage two, output is increasing, but it is increasing at a decreasing rate. In stage three, marginal product is negative, meaning that adding workers causes output to decline. This pulls down the average product and also causes the total product to decline. What motivates firms is profit. To understand profit, we first have to understand how firms transform inputs into output. Average product and marginal product help to explain this.